praise to our loving and merciful Lord, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus Christ, and the friendship and peace of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter and Good Shepherd Sunday. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Nunzia, Domenico, and Giuseppe Colandre. Just a further reminder that masks must be worn throughout the Mass. Thank you. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, we come before the Lord asking for His gentle and loving mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world and our sin of us. You take away the sin of the world and receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and our sin of us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us all pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, Namely, by what means he was saved, that all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like Him, or we shall see Him as He is. The Word of the Lord. With the exception of the Lord's Prayer, no other passage in our Bible is better known than the 23rd Psalm, The Lord is my Shepherd. And so on this Good Shepherd Sunday, let's take a closer look at this tiny gem of a song, of a poem, that has so enriched our prayer life. In fact, the prayer life of the whole world. Because like the song's amazing grace and simple gifts, the 23rd Psalm would sound equally appropriate on the lips of a Jew or a Christian or a Muslim. 
its appeal is almost universal. And yet if we take it out of its religious context, the actual words of Psalm 23 could simply be a statement of trust in the guidance of a strong leader. Notice the word God is never used. The Lord in question could in fact be a secular master. For example, in our Western civilization, back in the Middle Ages, these eight verses of Psalm 23 could have expressed the allegiance of a vassal to his feudal lord of the manor, or in the east, of a samurai to his warlord. Nevertheless, Psalm 23 is a profoundly religious text. But what did it say to its original audience? In proper Bible study, that's always the first question. Only after we've determined what the scripture first meant back then, can we figure out what, if anything, it means to us now. Well, in this case, its source is easy to determine. Psalm 23 is one of the Hebrew Tehillim, the songs of praise that our Jewish ancestors used in their temple worship. So this is not a poem to be read or to be recited. It is a lyric, a liturgical song, and it would have been chanted with various musical instruments, especially wind and percussion, to accompany the tune and accentuate the beats. Jewish poetry doesn't use any rhyme, but it's profoundly rhythmic. At times it almost seems to bounce. From the Hebrew vocabulary used, Bible scholars have concluded that this song was composed during the sixth century before Christ. Now that would be the time when the Jews were prisoners of war, living in Babylon. So this is a song of exiles who are longing to be led home, of slaves who are trusting that God will soon set them free. Clearly then, the word Lord in the opening line is Yahweh, the one true God who had chosen the Jews as his cherished people. And this first line immediately establishes the controlling image of the song. Yahweh, the creator of all things, the ruler of the world, is called a shepherd. Now, that's not quite so unusual as you might suppose. In the poetry of the ancient Middle East, Shepherd was a rather common designation for a god or for a king. It suggested a strong leader who displayed tender, almost parental care for his needy children, his people. To the Jews, of course, the word would conjure up the god who in the Exodus had led them out of Egyptian bondage and into their promised land, which they always described as flowing with milk and honey. Jewish poetry often described Israel as Yahweh's flock. But Psalm 23 makes all of this intensely personal and intimate. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So the song does see Yahweh as savior of the nation, but it also sees him as a personal friend who accompanies us on life's journey. The second and third verses continue that shepherd flock metaphor. The gentle shepherd searches out for the greenest pastures, the most peaceful streams, where his sheep may safely graze and drink and find repose. 
But then in verse 4, everything changes. And the metaphor shifts to talk about a really religious experience, a religious journey. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along right paths for his name's sake. So the lyric now leaves behind all the imagery of a shepherd caring for his helpless animals. Instead, the singer of the song is now clearly a human person who can choose between right and wrong, and his obedience reflects upon the honor and name of his master. And so confident is this person of faith in Yahweh's leadership that his trust holds firm even when the road of the journey becomes dark and dangerous. He knows that Yahweh will lead him safely through the dark valley, the mountain passes. And the shepherd's rod and staff have now become the weapons of a warrior who will ward off the enemy and instill courage. In ringing tones, the singer bravely proclaims, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Notice the singer is no longer talking about God in the deferential third person as he. Instead, he shifted to the intimate second person, you. So the song started out as a profession of faith, but from this point on, it's an expression of love. The final verses are rich in traditional Jewish imagery. After the dangerous trek through the wilderness, the singer gives thanks for his safe delivery, and he rejoices in the delights of a sacred meal. The kings of the ancient Middle East used to give lavish banquets as a sign of their tremendous wealth and generosity. And at this point, Psalm 23 does something really quite sophisticated. It indulges in some dramatic shape-shifting, the sort of thing that we usually experience only in our dreams, where faces seem to blur and merge and blend into one another. So Yahweh, the majestic king of creation, has first morphed into a gentle shepherd, then into a mighty warrior, and finally into a gracious host. His defeated enemies are now prisoners of war who are forced to look on in humiliation as he throws a victory party for his faithful followers. The psalm puts it this way, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. In this dream of rapture, God himself is setting the table, anointing the heads of his guests of honor, and even filling up the cups for the first toast. That's something that usually would be done by a servant not by the host. Since the Jews of that time had no clear belief in any life after death, this sacred meal represents their yearning for contact, contact with their loving God, to sit at his table, to rejoice in his company, to bask in his love. And for a Jew, where would this sacred banquet ideally occur? Well, the last line of the song tells us that. In the house of the Lord, the Jerusalem temple, to which these exiles were so longing to return, and which at that time had been reduced to rubble. So the final lines of the 23rd Psalm are just brimming over with ecstasy. But 
is an undercurrent of nostalgia and of painful regret. The singer longs to be with his Savior forever in a world beyond slavery, beyond Babylon, even beyond Jerusalem. As an Orthodox Jew, the singer still restricts his words to his own time and place, this world. So he says, all the days of my life, and he says, for years to come. But obviously the heart of the singer is asking, in fact begging, for so much more. He wants to be with God in a world beyond time and space, forever and ever. But he doesn't, in his vocabulary, have the one word he needs, heaven. Of course, for us Christians, this glorious song takes on additional tones and colors. The image of the Lord Jesus as the Good Shepherd dominated Christian art right from the very beginning. We see it visualized in the wall paintings and the mosaics of the early church. And in fact, at that time, this song would be what was sung at the Easter Vigil as a newly baptized adult walked up out of the dark waters of baptism and into the brightly lighted church for the Eucharist his or her first sacred meal. And now 20 centuries later, Psalm 23 remains the most appropriate and the most frequently requested song at our Masses of Christian burial. As we celebrate with a loved one who has walked safely through the dark valley of this world and who is now at home in our Lord's heavenly light. No wonder this precious psalm is so popular, because for Jews and Christians alike, this compact little song of praise contains in capsule form all the glorious themes, all the dynamic energy of our salvation history. In just a few concentrated lines, we come face to face with God as creator, as savior, as sanctifier. This song is simply bursting with possibilities. At the slightest touch, it explodes with grace. And what's more, it speaks to the heart. It refreshes the soul. together now profess our common faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born from Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God of faith, not substantial.
as children of God, we now offer to our loving Father all of our prayers and our heartfelt desires. For those who shepherd our church, may they lead lives of service as they care for their flock, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increased respect of all of God's creation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the COVID pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all first responders, for members of the armed forces, for healthcare professionals, and all who risk their own lives for the protection of others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may God grant them healing strength and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they follow Jesus, the risen Lord, into the kingdom of light and peace. Salvatore Bonito, and especially for Nunzio, Domenico, and Giuseppe Colandrea, whom we remember at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, we are your children. Each of us a sacred part of your family. Guide us in the right paths and listen to our prayers. And this we ask as all things in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. my friends, that these gifts of bread and wine and the gift of our lives may be found pleasing and acceptable to the Lord, our loving God. Sing together the unending hymn 
of your glory as they now proclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Bishop, and all of your beloved people. Remember, Lord, Nunzia, Domenico, and Giuseppe, Colindrea, whom you have called from this world to yourself, and grant that they who are united with your Son, a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with all the saints and apostles, you have pleased you throughout the ages. May they merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may pray by you through your Son, Jesus Christ.
pray now with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words our brother Christ has given us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace and happiness all the days of our lives. For it is in your mercy that we ask you now to keep us free from sin and protect us from all problems as we wait in joyful hope for the return of our brother, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, and peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who have been called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul.
let us all pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you abundantly, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks be to God.